Hello everybody and welcome back and let us continue from where we previously uh, finished uh, which was the burp suit brute forcer what we want to do right now is use our own tool well not our own tool but a different tool that is already installed in Kali Linux which is called Hydra so if you type here Hydra it will give you the uh, different options that you can use for this tool now we will do the same attack with the same user list and same password list just and on the same page in order to show you that this will work much faster than the previous scan which took around 30 seconds. So the syntax can be a little bit hard for this uh, for this tool. I will show you why it can be a little bit problematic if you do not know what you're doing. So I will make sure to uh, explain every part of the syntax. Now, before we even type anything, you can see the usage or the example right here, which is rather simple than the one that we will use at the end. So we do not care about it at the moment. Let us just clear the screen and let us just open our burp suit. Now, let us go to the proxy and turn our intercept on in order to check out the packet that we will get once we type here any username and any password. So just type here anything. And what we are interested in this packet is the path that it took on the website in order to log into this page. So what you want to do right here is copy this page right here or this path right here. So just copy it. Now the principle behind this attack is the same for any page. So basically just go onto the any page that you have permission to test. And if you in turn your intercept on and ban type a bunch of random words, you just want to copy the page itself in order to specify the correct path that you will brute force. So once you copy that, you want to go onto your, well, first of all, what you want to do is turn the intercept off. So it gives us wrong username and wrong password. And what we want to go right here, tap here Hydra, and then type the IP address of our virtual machine, which is referring to as a host. Now, the next thing that we want, need to type right here is this HTTP minus post, my, no, my, pardon me, minus form minus post. What this means is basically that it, this is a post type request. And with that post type request, we are filling in the form. So this right here is called form. And the request type that we are using to send the form is post request. And it will always be post request. You cannot send form with the get request. So once you type here HTTP minus form minus post, you just add here the path between these two. So just add path right here and once you add path you do not want to close it what you want to do is type here two dots this is just the syntax so once you type here two dots after the path what you want to type here is username and then this upper arrow sign no pardon me first goes username equals let me just enlarge this maybe it will be easier so two dots username equals then this upper arrow and type here big user then once again upper arrow then this sign let me just find it this sign right here I'm not really sure how it is called on English but type that sign and after that type here pass w d equals and then once again the upper arrow and then pass and another upper arrow and then once again the same side and then type here submit equals submit and then two dots once again and then wrong username or password dot and then close this all. So what happened right here is basically first here we specify the host which is the IP address of our machine. Then we specify the type of request that we want to send, which is we are filling in the form with the post request. And then we specify the path to the form, which is this. We copy that from the packet. 
And then after that comes the syntax which is separated with two dots. So two dots, username equals, and now the Hydra syntax knows uh, where the username is because you specified it between these two arrows. It will use all the usernames from our user.txt list in order to put it between these two arrows every time. It is a little bit harsh syntax, so you will get used to it after some time. The same is with the password, which is separated with this sign from the username. And the password, in between these two arrows, it will specify all of the passwords from our password.txt list. Now, then you separate right here with the same sign as well. And we type here submit equals submit. And that submit is referring to this button right here, which is basically submit. So the button in the HTML page is called submit. So we type here submit equals submit. Let me just find right here. Why did it type it twice? Let me just, okay. Let me just clear the screen. Something happened. I don't know why that happened, but it doesn't matter. So submit is referring to the button that we have to click in order to send our request. And with these two dots right here, it is searching for the packet that doesn't have this string. It is the same principle as in the burp suit, just the syntax right here is a little bit harder. Since in burp suit everything was automated and we could do it easily. Here in the syntax, we need to specify after the button that we click, what type of string are we not looking for in the packets. So once you do that, you just type here minus capital L and for the list and I then just find the path to your user.txt file. For me, it is in this directory. And here type here minus dot P for the passwords dot txt. And once you type that, you got the entire syntax written, so the entire command written. So right now what you want to do is just type, press enter. And we can see that it started attacking and it should finish relatively fast. And as you can see right here, it already finished and it found one valid username and one valid password, which is admin admin. And if we try it once again right here, so just type here admin admin, it will work again. So this is the syntax that we covered or the command that we covered. Now the prevention for this attack, if you, for example, want to create your own web page is basically just block the user from uh, trying to log in after five failed attempts, for example. Now this exam, this uh, method of prevention, the brute force attack will basically make 90% of people quit after they notice that the website is blocking after a certain number of attempts. For example, I believe that Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, they all do that. But uh, there are bypasses for that as well, which is changing your IP address every time you finish brute forcing, for example, five passwords. But this is more advanced thing and we will do it later on when we attack the social medias with our brute force. So that's about it for this lecture. In the next one, we will cover some of the other attacks on our OWASP virtual machine. And until then, I hope you have a great day and take care.